my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron's Crypt. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, we use our combined 30 years of experience to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. On this episode of The Crypt, we're going to talk about personal evolution and what that means for you and what it's been like for myself and Fun Size. And speaking of the world's greatest co-host, hello, Fun Size. Hello, Master Cauldron. How's it going? It's going great. How are you? I'm doing really well. I checked in with some email this morning and got a big boost of encouragement. You know how much we love our supporters here, the cryptors, our producers. And we had Amy or Ami from Australia make a $20 donation. So that was really cool. I just wanted to give them a shout out from Australia. (laughs) I love it when we go international. (laughs) Me too. There's nothing better than being able to hear from our listeners around the world and even those that are our neighbors. It's an incredible feeling. It really is. It lets us know that we're on the right path, doesn't it? Yes, it does. All right. Well, let's hit those rules to love by and then we can jump straight into this. So rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky. That's K-N-K-I. It comes from the kinky app available on all platforms. That stands for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. And rule number three, submission is not about authority and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. That comes from the author, Paul Young. All right, so I bet you are going to have a definition for me when it comes to personal evolution, aren't you? Of course. What kind of co-host would I be if I didn't give you your favorite thing? Personal evolution is just that. It's how we evolve and grow over time. Pretty simple. Wow. Simple and just how you like it. Oh, uh, all right. So, but seriously, I'm, I'm, feeling pretty playful this morning obviously but this is a a really big topic i know even on fat life right now i've went back to my status or or whatever it is is evolving so personal evolution really is a big thing and there's a lot that leads us to this growth or stunted growth or de-evolution in some cases so let's break that down into sections as far as what leads to this and why we why we do this why is it really necessary for our survival for you what would be one of the first things that i guess precipitates this change and evolution well one of the first things that i noticed not only with myself but everyone i have encountered in every corner of life is learning you start out with many of us simply going, ooh, I like this kink or activity. It sounds fun. They'll see pictures on the internet of somebody tied up, or they'll read Fifty Shades of Grey, or they'll come across something else. And then we learn about that thing because we like to learn. We like to know what we're talking about, what we're thinking about, what we want in our lives. And as we start learning, we begin to grow and evolve. And the more we've learned the more we found out about that thing and the more we wanted to learn something new. And it starts this whole process that keeps going. One of the very first things that you and I discussed over a year ago when you asked me to be your co-host was our mutual love of learning, of constantly growing and evolving. Yeah. And I feel like that's true for everyone. You know, I forgot that that was part of the, the conversation, but I guess that was one of the, you're right, one of the foundations of, I guess what we've got in common so much. And I think probably one of the things that we always go to the most when it comes to learning, because we typically can't seem to learn from other people's mistakes or experiences. So we rely on our own experience a lot for our education. How does that play into evolution? Well, the things we experience We take in the hands-on portion of that, the real-world activities. You can say that you like the idea of someone being tied up or being tied up yourself, but until you actually experience that, you only like the ideal of it. And then once you've explored that as the experience, you can decide 
for yourself if you truly enjoy that and what aspect of that you enjoy. And in that way, you evolve as a person and you evolve into whatever role that you are trying to outline for yourself in life. It's often been said that experience is the great educator of life, and I tend to agree with that. It certainly seems to be what motivates me and drives me to grow as a person, or as I jokingly said earlier, de-evolve in some cases, because I think that sometimes when we're going through this evolution and these these changes, we can pick up bad habits. In thinking about this topic, I was primarily thinking about a lot of the, the positive things, the way that we learn and grow and move forward and in our personal lives. And this doesn't just apply to BDSM or, or kink. This is all of of life we're doing these things so i think it's also important to recognize that whether it's through the experience itself or taking someone's wisdom and trying to apply it to our own life that we can do this uh you know along with uh what happens with experiences stimulation i knew you were gonna have fun with that (sighs) So, uh, as we're being stimulated, what really do you mean by that when you were putting this together and you come up with basically these four parts that lead to our evolution? Stimulation comes from experience. Like I was talking about with bondage, you can find the stimulation of certain types of rope appealing, whether you're it's being used on you or someone else. You can find tape appealing or not appealing based on the sensations that you are drawing in. But it's not just physical sensations, especially when it comes to BDSM. You're also bringing in mental and emotional stimulation. How does it feel to t- be tied up? How does it feel to tie someone else up? How does it feel to take someone over your knee? These kinds of things are going to be part of those experiences. They're your stimulation. Everything from the lights and the sounds that we use, it all comes into play and defines our experience and what we're going to make of it, what we're choosing to carry on with us and incorporate into our beings and what we're choosing to discard. And that's really where our limits, our likes and dislikes come from, is from these experiences and stimulations. Oh, okay. So that's way less dirty than I thought that it was going to be. Well, I mean, if you dig deep, there's some really, really dirty, explicit parts in there, but this is not rated M, so we're not going to talk about those things right now. Right. All right. So we've got our learning uh, which goes into experience and then stimulation. And then finally, I would assume, and, and as you have here, change, finally getting into what we're becoming and that true evolution. Yes. Change is taking these things that you've learned, experienced, and been stimulated by and really presenting to the world what you have evolved into or what you are evolving as. Change is the cement showing of that, both to the world and to yourself often. Okay. All right. Uh, And if I seem a little strange in this or a little bit off more so than I normally do and not really putting in my own two cents as much is because I know that we're going to get into Uh, talking about our own personal evolution specifically and how we've evolved over the years to give a couple of examples of how things take place. So I'm kind of holding back a little bit on my typical personal commentary, (laughs) (laughs) which, as you know, for me is pretty hard to do. I am like most humans. I do love talking about myself. So... (laughs) I I can't disagree with that fact. All right. So uh, I guess that was kind of of generalized in talking about personal evolution. Yes. But to dive strictly into the context of BDSM itself, and I know this happens to all of us and should continue to happen throughout all of our lives. But what about like as a newbie, is there advice there that you're thinking of? Because I've got a few things in mind that is not talking about myself, but it will be very important. So I'm, and, and you know me, it might take me a minute because I'm long winded. So I thought I'd give you the, the first opportunity to jump on that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Sometimes it is 
kind of hard to cut into your long winds there. Mm. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you are. So uh, I can't deny it. I do. <laughs> so I would say that we all started as newbies. You you can think what you want about it, but we all do. We're all shiny and new at some point. Absolutely. And even when we've been a part of the lifestyle for a long time, this can still happen to us. We learn about an interest, experience it when we're ready, take in the stimulation, and then the changes happen. And it becomes part of who we are. So I always think of the learning stage as being a newbie. Whether you've been in this for 20 years, 10 years, whatever. If you find a new interest in something, you're a newbie to it. So just own where you're at and be able to learn. And then I always think of the experience stage as being an amateur. The stimulation as being a novice. And then finally, the changing stage as mastering part of yourself. And that's really something to be proud of. Wow. I really like that. You said that you think of the learning stage as being a newbie. The experience stage is becoming an amateur. Stimulation was what? Becoming a novice because you're starting to experience it and evaluate the stimulation you're receiving. And then the changing stage is mastering a part of yourself. And that one will stick with me. I love how you word that mastering part of yourself. Brilliantly said. And on this, because we bring up newbies a few times here and the beginning of things, and I know that I've kind of been hammering on this a lot lately, but we all start out as newbies and a lot of people give newbies a lot of crap. And we really need to back off from that Mm -hmm. because as we go through life and we're growing and learning and changing and evolving. We're all new at different things constantly. And if you're not reaching out to do things that you've never done before, that's called stagnation. And I'm sure we're going to talk about that a lot too, but that's a dangerous place to be because it tends to lead people down the path of thinking that they already know everything and that they've already experienced everything. And they can go either to narcissism or a drastic depression and basically a fatalism that uh, I've learned all that there is to learn and there's no point anymore. I really have one thing to say about stagnation and it kind of segue into my next point. Stagnation is for the dead. However, occasionally we will hit a plateau in our cycle of growth. We get burnt out or just have trouble finding our next interest to learn. Yeah. So that's what I had to say about stagnation. It's for the dead. If you're alive, you should still be learning and growing as a person. There will be pauses in this, but it's just that. It's a pause. And often you can find yourself going from a pause to growing in leaps and bounds because it's simply not human nature to stop growing. Yeah, and when you get into those growth spurts, that's a very fun time often, which can lead back to frenzy yep. <laughs> and rocket you right off that cliff into the, the frenzy river waiting for you below. Something that we do need to make sure that we're watching for. It, it, you know, in all the things that I do inside the lifestyle, outside the lifestyle, the vanilla world, the frenzy is one of the things that is probably only really talked about here, but absolutely Absolutely applies to every area of life. I mean, how many times do you find a new hobby and just go, you know, so headstrong into this new hobby and you kind of forget about other things for a while? And, you know, I'm a person of, I'm an artistic person. So I have a lot of hobbies in creating. I got into a big conversation with several other people who are podcast hosts about a week ago. And we're talking about the name podcast itself versus like internet radio or webcast. And then us calling ourselves podcasters, which yes, I do this, but I think my preferred term is content creator because that is really what we do. And that encompasses the artistic side. And I know when I first discovered these things that most of the world refers to as 
podcasts, it was just straight off that cliff. I couldn't consume enough content and I still consume about 70 hours of content a week creating shows. I've got three or four other shows that I'm currently working on and trying to find the time for, but I can't do that right now without taking away from this one. So I've had to back burner those and put those on hold. So I've got all the the domains and building the websites, but I'm not going to start recording those until I reach a point where it's not taking away from this one because this is number one and, and will always be my top priority. So I think it's just important really to think about this aspect in all areas of our life and how we change and grow and evolve and what that causes us to do so that we can not fall into some of the pitfalls of evolution as well. I totally agree with that. I have fallen into frenzy just from a change in work before. And side note, I find it very interesting the way you think of yourself as a content creator. I honestly think of our partnership as you're an entertainer. (laughs) and an editor, and I'm an educator. (laughs) And I don't know, I just, I find it very interesting, the labels we give ourselves. Yeah, I I mean, we're both, we're creating content for, to be consumed. That is very true. So I think, I think that kind of encompasses all of it. I mean, I I think of myself as an educator as well. um, Oh, you definitely are. You you definitely are. You're teaching me things every day. (laughs) But it's, it's, kind of like that that all-encompassing term uh, you know i want to make people think laugh cry groan <laughs> evolve and that's that's kind of what we do here i mean some episodes were really serious and we dive into some very hard topics you know we pour ourselves into it other times we laugh and cut up and joke and we talk about things a little bit lighter and hopefully you guys laugh along with us and i think by the emails that we get from you it really shows that you are laughing with us and and crying with us and learning and evolving with us. So I just want to thank everybody again for being with us. And speaking of that, let me go ahead and thank these Patreon supporters, better known as our producers. Uh, Executive producers, Jeff, Jeremiah, and Silas, our senior producers, Matt and Jeremy, our producers, Kane, Sen, Danny, and Heather, and our junior producers, K2SO, Irish Mountain Dragon, thank you, Fun Size's husband, and Buffalo Dom 84. And then, of course, as I mentioned in the beginning, Amy from Australia, also an executive producer of this episode. Thank you so much for that. And back to this conversation. So where are we at here? We were also about to mention that you should be experiencing personal evolution through the course of your relationships too. We learn from our partners and can make profound changes to ourselves. And when we say that we learn from relationships, I don't just mean your BDSM relationships. I mean friendships. Cauldron and I learn from each other all the time. We have experimented in that and we have learned from each other and been able to evolve and grow. We learn from our work relationships. We learn from the relationships of passing people on the street sometimes. So you really just got to take it in and experience, be stimulated and make the changes that you feel are necessary. Yeah, we've, I I know personally, I have learned a lot through our relationship, both from you and with you, as we have taken this content creation (laughs) journey together (laughs) uh, as entertainers and comedians and uh, the sad clown and then of course as educators but yeah it's it's been a heck of a journey and i'm excited to see how this continues and where it goes next especially with the weekend intensive coming up in september and that possibility of getting to meet you in person because you live a few thousand miles miles away and we have never met in person which needs to be fixed (laughs) yes so this is going to be awesome and if you're wondering what i'm talking about with the weekend intensive uh it's going to be a three-day two-night food included weekend at one of the biggest and most beautiful cabins in all of the smoky mountains and which a lot of people say that but this is actually true it really is where we do just that we get into things very intensely things like medical play impact play cathartic impact play protocol rigging and rope play there's going to be a lot 
It's only $200. Check in Friday night, check out Sunday morning. For an extra 50 bucks, you can check in Thursday night and check out Monday morning. And there's going to be a big party Sunday night that nobody wants to miss, I promise. So that extra $50 is for two nights at a cabin in the Smokies in September. I mean, you're not going to find a better deal than that, especially with this level of education. But anyway, enough of that little commercial. (laughs) And I was going to add that I'll probably be making s'mores. So, you know, you like kink and s'mores. I love (laughs) s'mores. You can't take me anywhere that's camping environment and not have s'mores. (laughs) Well, I'll tell you what, as I'm relaxing my shoulder in the jacuzzi after after a fun night of play, I'll have to have someone <clears throat> serve me some s'mores in the uh, in the jacuzzi. Uh, I was, I was going to say, I'll I'll bring you some s'mores so we can sit there in the jacuzzi together and eat them. Yeah, uh, I'd just like to see this protocol that you've learned over the years of play. <laughs> Let's see how your presentation skills are. <laughs> hmm uh, you know, I got to give a little poke when I can. Sometimes a big uh, poke. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes a big poke. Uh, all right. Ooh. Yeah. All right. So this is not going to be one of those longer episodes. Nope. I mean, it's pretty self-evident when it comes to personal evolution, but you have certainly put together something that has me thinking. And there's a couple of things in here, as I've already said, that the way that you worded them really has made me think about a few things. So I want to really get into how we have personally evolved. And I'm, I don't want to like take the deep dive necessarily, but how have things changed for you? How have you noticed yourself becoming the person that you are today when you look back at your past, what, how many years? Uh, almost. We're almost to the 11 year anniversary of my beginning of training. Yeah. So as you, it'll, it'll fall on my birthday this coming month. Oh, so wow. in about three weeks. Wow. I, yeah. I wasn't even thinking your birthday was that soon, but isn't that a nice way for me to slip Oops. in a friendly reminder? <laughs> uh, yeah. It really is. Thank you. So anyway, fun size. From your perspective and your experience, how has your personal evolution come into play? Well, I started out interested, even though I didn't quite understand the depth of that interest as far as BDSM goes. I certainly had kinks, even from a very young age. Vampirism was definitely one of them. Wax play was included, blood fetishism, those things. But at the same time, I didn't know how to incorporate those things. I didn't know how to ask for them. And I actually had a lot of self-repulsion at the idea of asking someone, particularly a man, for those things. So I was introduced to my trainer, went through training, started to understand more of myself as I learned. And I was going through submissive training and it was a very difficult time because I was forcing myself to submit to a man, which is not something that was easy for me. Definitely didn't make things easy for him. But as I learned and evolved, I found that I wasn't just submissive. I also had dominant traits. So we began my dominant training, which I've talked about before, and eventually I evolved into becoming a switch. So I would say overall, my evolution of of the lifestyle and who I am in this is more about self-acceptance than it is anything. I had to learn how to accept myself, not only for my kinks, but for the fact that I didn't hate all men and that at the same time, I wasn't expected to be straight, even by my own standards, which for a long time in my life, I tried to hold myself to, which was very tricky going, I hate men, but I also want them. So for me, that was definitely part of it. And honestly, in the last, I would say two years, I have experienced and evolved more as an educator and learning that I don't just want one person to teach this lifestyle to or to teach elements of life to, but several. I teach my friends. I teach co-workers various things every day. I have really become an educator above all else. And I'm actually in the process of attempting to conceive a child. And I'm really looking forward to showing this wonderful little human I'm trying to create all the beauty that life has to offer and being able to educate in that sense. So that's me. That's my evolution. That's really beautiful. Thank you. (laughs) 
So that last part was <laughs> especially. <laughs> it's not often that I'm kind of thrown off by things, but that that really got me. Becoming an educator, and that just makes me think of how I always look at raising children as you're not raising children, you're raising adults. And part of that is because you can't educate, you know, or it's, it's so difficult to educate a child, but in educating them as in keeping in mind that they're going to become an adult, it's just a, and helping them with their evolution to transition from that child to adult. Um, I guess for millennia, the foundation of, who we are starts there as far as that evolution, doesn't it? It really does. Quite beautiful. Thank you. Um, so I guess I'll take over. And kick back. <laughs> Please do. I'm I'm gonna sit <laughs> I'm gonna sit back and uh, try to stop blushing now. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I know you don't do well with compliments. Not sincere ones like that. <laughs> All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that your tray tables are in the upright and locked position as we're about to enter my personal evolution. No, I'm going to keep this short. Uh, basically with me, I was incredibly shy. I was very bullied, um, because I didn't realize my own strengths and was receiving bullying at home by a brother and father and then went to school and received it as well. Not fun at all, but it caused me to be very shy when I was really young. You know, we're talking elementary. Things started changing a little bit as I went from middle school and high school, but I was very naive and very secretly super kinky because of the religious pressures that was put on me. And I was very much, okay, well, if I can't talk about it, if I'm told I can't learn about it, then I'm going to find it out for myself. So mm -hmm. it was all about self-education and self-exploration. And I did this with, with uh, partners all through my teenage years. Now, I say that I really got into the lifestyle when I was 18, but the fact is, like so many of us, you know, I, I remember very, very vividly being way younger than I should have been, <laughs> according to some people, thinking about being in a dominant position or being in a submissive position, even because it's it was at that point very exploratory. And so eventually I found a partner and become a switch. We were involved like you I have this huge vampire fetish. And there in Atlanta, there was actually an underground vampire scene that was very big. And it led me to learning and becoming educated and to come outside of myself that led me to meeting other people that were in the what I consider to be a the true lifestyle because to be honest this vampire scene it was really a bunch of kids or people acting like kids early 20s maybe even a couple of people in their early 30s don't get me wrong we were really kinky but as far as the more traditional protocols and that sort of thing i had to really seek those out and ask questions and it was like six degrees of separation from the leather clubs where i could learn these protocols and where where I was at in this underground vamp scene. But eventually that led to me developing a very strong position as a dominant in basically a, a hybrid leather community family with extremely high protocol and needing that structure out of my servants, basically the servants, submissive slaves. And that even progressed further because when you and I met, that's still where I was at. Mm -hmm. I still required that high protocol, but through experience and part of that ex experience being because of you, I have learned and transformed yet again into what I am now, which is just in an ongoing state of evolution where I've relaxed a lot of my required protocols and enhanced some of the more spontaneous primal sides of myself and not being so demanding on people that may come into service to me. And that's very uncomfortable for me because I've always been a certain way. I mean, you know, you're talking 20 years of it. And to change that, it was scary, but I really realized. And when I say it's because of a lot of it has to do 
with you. I mean, a lot of it has to do with you and a lot of the conversations that we had, our personal experience together through our own trials and tribulations of friendship that all friendships go through and then our personal exploration of things. Uh, I've learned that that's just not where I am right now because one, I just don't have the time for it. That's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. And so getting into that primal side of myself, and now I'm just trying to be completely accepting that I might not be the same person when I wake up tomorrow that I am today and being open to that change. So that's a very brief breakdown of my personal evolution. Not quite as poetic or as beautiful as yours, but it's all it's all evolution. Well, I think you said it beautifully anyway, and I appreciate that I have gotten to be part of that as I can honestly say that you've been a big part of mine as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's a fun journey, uh, and I, I love it. I love how it continues, and I look forward to And that's the biggest difference between me now, I guess, and me then. And that whole change in the desire for that strict protocol is an absolute reflection of me relaxing and learning to embrace change and looking forward to how my life evolves, just like you're looking forward to how your life is going to evolve when you and your amazing husband bring this child into the world. And so it's really cool to think about, you know, how we go from scared to death, mm -hmm. especially, uh, well, on that topic with you, you know, when we met, I don't think you were exactly amped at the idea of having a child. Uh, I did not want children at all when we met. And you, you actually had a rather large hand in changing my mind on that. Uh, it's, uh, you never know where it's going to come from, do you? No, nope, never do. So, fun size. Yes. Do you have any final thoughts that you would like to share with us about personal evolution? Only final thought I have is that you have to embrace it. You're going to evolve. So just embrace it. Yeah, this is three episodes in a row that you have stolen my final thought. <laughs> Great minds think alike. I know. I'm going to have to stop being polite and start getting real. Oh, wait. That was the tagline for real world back on MTV. Um Anyway, I, I guess my final thought would just be ditto. Yeah, embrace it. And it just makes life so much easier because it's going to happen. And as my wife puts it, when these changes take place, it's a lot like childbirth. We go through contractions and then expansions. And these contractions can be long periods of time. They can be painful. And the more that we fight against it and we struggle and we push and we go kicking and screaming, the bigger negative impact it's going to have on us and those around us. So give into it and don't be afraid to push through it and get to that growth as quickly as you can, because it's so much more beautiful on the other side, especially when it's something tangible, something that you can hold. And a lot of times that just means being able to hold your head a little bit higher and be a little bit more proud of yourself and what you've accomplished. All right. Well, let's get things wrapped up. If this is normally where you tune out, please stay with me to the end. Our executive producers, Jeff, Jeremiah, and Silas, senior producers, Matt and Jeremy, producers, Kane, Sin, Danny, and Heather, and our junior producers, K2SO, Irish Mountain Dragon, Buffalo Dom, and then, of course, Amy from Australia, uh, being an executive producer of this episode. If you'd like to become one of our show producers, go to our website, coldernscript.com, click on the Support Us tab, and you can find that information there. Also, a shout-out to BDSMcontracts.org for their donation of their 25-page soft and hardbound MS and DS contracts. You can find them at BDSMcontracts.org. Highly recommend, if you curious about that you go check them out use the coupon code cauldron20 that's k-u-l-d-r-i-n-2-0 for 20 percent discount off of all purchases and finally whipping stripes my personal maker of all things paracord and leather for my impact toys those guys are absolutely amazing i don't have a discount code for you because their prices are so low and their quality is so high they can't offer a discount Next week on The Crypt, we're going to go into details about hurt versus harm. In the meantime, go to coldernscrypt.com for show notes, how to subscribe information, and the link to the FetLife group so you can take part in the conversation and be eligible for giveaways like one of those 25-page 
MS or DS contracts. While you're there, click on the Support Us tab to become a Patreon supporter. Also, don't forget that if you have filled out the limits and interest survey, or if you don't know what that is and you want to check that out, again, cauldronscript.com, that's going to be in the resources tab. It goes over tons of kinks and possible interests and all different types of dynamics. It's going to take you about a half hour to fill it out. It emails it back to you, and I've not been collecting those email addresses so you don't have to worry about any spam. The only reason you put your email address in there is so it will send it back to you and you'll have a copy of it. And that's a great thing to have for negotiations as well because you can sit down and here's my yeses, here's my maybes, and here's my noes. Uh, Uh, Interesting thing with that. If you're with a partner, Say you're looking for your third, something my husband and I did. We took it together so that we have our own, but we also have ours as a partnership. So interesting thing that you can incorporate as well. Genius. See, that shows that I never really look at these unless I'm asked to because I didn't even know that that took place. Yeah, it was like (laughs) two months ago. (laughs) Mm, Maybe I'll have to be all pervy and dig through my emails and find it. I can I can send it straight back to you. I still have it in my inbox. Oh no, that's all right. Well yeah, no, that's that's really cool. I'm glad you brought that up. That's something that I know when I'm talking to someone new, I, I always have them go fill it out and then I'll fill out a new one just to make sure that it's up to speed and then we'll sit down and compare notes. I would like to get my wife to do one. I don't think she's actually ever done ones. Well, uh, tell her that I'm poking and prodding her that way then. <laughs> I will pass that along. All right, ladies and germs. That's definitely going to wrap us up for today. Thanks for sticking around to the end. Again, for all of our contact information, email, FetLife, Facebook, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the Patreons, the PayPals, you name it, you can find it at cauldronscrypt.com. This has been Master Cauldron and Fun Size for cauldronscrypt.com. Unearth the truth.